So let's launch R and get started. So the first thing that you will notice when you open up R is that you're presented with a menu, a few icons, but the main thing on your screen is going to be this R console. And this is going to be the workspace where you want to type in your commands. And for a lot of people, adjusting to the command line interface is a very big shift in thinking and a shift in a way of working. And I know that this was something for me that was a bit of a hurdle when I first started learning R, was getting used to typing a command on the command line and receiving a response from R within that command line. And really, the best way to become most comfortable with using the command line and with using R is to practice. And so you'll see here, anytime you, you'll get this sort of caret at the beginning of your command line. And the commands that you type in will be shown in red by default. And when you receive a response from R, it will show up in blue. And so on this page, I've just got a few examples of some simple operations that you could perform in R. And so I'd like to provide a few comments about, or a few, yeah, a few comments about what we've got on the screen here. So the pound sign, or the number sign here, is used to denote that a comment follows. And so when you have that, R knows that that's not actually a line of code that you would like it to read in. It will just skip by that. And so here, what we want to do is create a vector with five components. And so we have um, our, I created an arrow here, and we can use an arrow or an equal sign as an operator. And so we're telling R that X is going to be a vector and the C is to concatenate, and it's followed by our five vector components. We can perform scalar addition with our vector. So we've now got our vector, and we're adding four to each of our components. We can find the sum of those elements using the sum command, or we might want to know the highest value by entering the max command. And so it's by gaining comfort with these basic commands that we can really start to learn R. So I'd like to provide you with a resource just to introduce you to some basic commands in R. And they actually come in quite handy when even performing analyses with larger data sets because you will end up performing vector manipulations or accessing subsets of your data. And a lot of this is based on vectors and vector algebra. And so I would strongly encourage you to regularly practice using our software to gain proficiency and confidence. And after you've had some practice typing commands into R using the command line interface, and you start writing some more complex scripts, you'll probably want to obtain a text editor. And this allows you to really easily save and recall and subsequently modify scripts that you run in R. And so um, R for Mac has a built-in color text editor. And that's what I find to be just fine for me with working in R. Uh, for people who use Windows, there is an editor called Tin R, which stands for Tin is not Notepad. Um, and when putting together this webinar, I learned that there are often difficulties with Windows 7 and 10R, and also with newer versions of R and 10R. So I would caution you, uh, if you're a Windows user, in using this 10R web editor. But it can have some basic value for you, certainly. So you can still write and store a script using 10R. 10R very easily. 
So you may be wondering, well, I have this script file that I made in my text editor, but how can I actually run that using R? And so there are really two basic options. You can copy and paste from your text editor into the R console, or within Tin R, you can click on this little R icon in your menu bar under Start and Close Connections. You'd want to start the R GUI and then click on a line of your script and it will be highlighted in yellow and then press control and enter. And one of the things that you'll see here in Tin R is that your script is color coded. So you can see that all of your comments are listed in green and all of the sort of commands that you're telling R to perform are listed in black. So similarly, if you're using a text editor on a Mac, you could copy and paste your script into the R console, or you could highlight the lines that you'd like R to run and press Command and Enter. So this is just a slight difference between using R on a PC and using R on a Mac. And we can see here as well that the Mac editor for R is color coded as well. And it does nice little things like when I have a true or false option, as you see after this header, R uh, denotes this with different colors. So I've got T and that's in orange. 